your next assignment for your utopia, which is this. Um, did I post it on the Google Classroom yet? No? Okay. Um, I tell you what, I will post it right now so that you can follow along and maybe take notes on this file as we, uh, as we kind of talk through it. Uh, so you have uh, last week or within the last week set goals for your utopia. You've decided what sort of rights and, and freedoms are important for you and you've decided what sort of problems you wanted to solve. At least you should have. I haven't checked whether or not you've actually done that, but that was the assignment. Um, hey, thank you. Just what I always wanted. Um, then, sorry, I just need to find the Google Classroom here for you guys. Period two, A to K. So now that you have set the goals, what you're going to do next is try to, so I'm looking at the next time we're going to have this class. Uh, that should be Monday the 23rd, maybe? Let's go with that. I'm no long, they changed the schedule and I'm no longer confident in when classes are. <clears throat> All right, now we're going to go through the creative part of trying to figure out what should be in your utopia and how it should work. So for each category, I've, I've come up with nine different categories. Um, mm -hmm. There's entirely likely more than that. Nine is just what I came up with. Um, it would have been nice if I could have thought of 10, but uh, maybe I didn't try hard enough, but I thought of nine. Uh, different ways to look at what goes into a society. So, um, system of government, the first one. Basically here you've got three choices. Monarchy, oligarchy, and democracy. There are pros and cons to all of them. The point here is that you need to choose what is appropriate for the goals that you set out. What helps you achieve the kind of society that you want. So um, monarchy is uh, one, oligarchy is few, Democracy is the people. Um, I want you to, to uh, type it in unless you know exactly which one of these you're going to choose. But I would, I would recommend taking down these options um, or at least the one that you think you're going to go with. If you don't know yet, then, then write down all three. Um, so, the pros and cons of a monarchy. In a monarchy, meaning you have a king or a queen, you don't have to call them that. They can be empress or they can be grand poobah, does not matter. Um, but you have one person in charge for life. Now, this is, well, let me ask you, what's, what's good about that? 
What's good about having one person in charge? Yeah, you don't have to explain yourself to anybody. You don't have to defend yourself to anybody. So it's good for that one person. Um, what's a drawback? What's bad about having one person in charge? No? Can't think of anything? Well, having one person in charge means that all decisions have to go through one person. Now, unless your society is quite small, that's going to be quite impossible. Right? So, can the same person decide whether T-Bone passed his driver's test and whether Rico should go to jail or not and how long Logan has to spend in jail and what everyone gets for dinner? Well, if your community is the size of this classroom, then maybe one person can make all those decisions. If your community is the size of Canada, then that's not possible. Right? No one can make all the decisions. So decisions then have to be delegated. So hopefully, um, you guys know what I mean by delegated? Okay. What that means is sharing of responsibility for decision making. Right? So instead of telling you what the perfect world should look like, I'm delegating that responsibility to you to decide what it should look like. Um, so the monarch could delegate the responsibility for criminal justice to judges and things like that, right? There are all sorts of lesser authorities. Um, but how does this system, whatever it is, help you achieve the goals that you want? That's what's important. Okay. Um, on distribution of wealth, Um, what are the options here? How do people get money or things? Okay, so uh, a job in a capitalist society socialist society communist I don't know, feudalist is wealth distributed equally? How do people get the things that they need? Um, all of these systems are flawed. A lot of utopian writers have tried to come up with something else that maybe incorporates different elements of these things. If you don't know what these things mean, then you will need to find out. Um, culture and values. Now this is where what I said up at the top is important, um, or where it starts to become important. Remember that you make all the rules. You don't have to explain how you could turn this society into the one you want. You're starting from scratch. So you don't have to worry about how you're going to convince people 
to abandon the values that you think they have now and to embrace your new values. You don't have to worry about that. You are starting from scratch and you can indoctrinate people however you want. So the things to think about here are um, holidays, festivals, entertainment, all of those are parts of culture. Uh, so other things too, lots of other things, but food, clothing, all of these things build values. Now, if you're creating this society, you're crafting this society, then you're starting with this and then with the values. What do you want people to think is important? How do you want people to think about things? If your values are, um, it's important to you to reinforce sharing and um, uh, generosity, then the holidays and festivals and things like that that you create should be ones that reinforce generosity. Does that kind of make sense? So it's just th things to think about. Um, religion, uh, I'm just going to scroll this up here because it's really hard for me to write at hip level sidearm. I don't know if you ever tried to write sidearm, but uh, it doesn't work. Under freedom, under, under freedom, under religion, this is how I see your options. And you can come up with other ones if you can think of something that I haven't thought of. Here are the three options. Freedom of religion, one religion, no religion. Which one of these things helps you to accomplish the goals you want as a society? Which one of these things helps you solve the problems that you set out to solve and accomplish the goals that you thought were important? Um, reinforce the rights and values you thought were important. So it seems as though, I don't know, to most people, the obvious answer would be freedom of religion. And that's something that we're sort of taught is valuable. Um, the problem is that freedom of religion is the trickiest one to balance because as soon as you have different, different religions, then you have us's and them's, right? You have a we and you have an other and that creates divisions. So one religion, meaning everyone in your society shares the same religion is a whole lot easier and simpler in order for, and you can invent the religion you want um, to help you reinforce the values that you want to reinforce. Um, or no religion, maybe even simpler still, but harder than to reinforce the values that you want to reinforce that way, depending on what those values are. So again here, you don't have to worry about um, creating this world. You are just writing it into existence. So what that means is you don't have the problem that the Soviet Union had um, after the communist revolution in Russia a hundred odd years ago where they said, okay, we're banning religion. No religion is allowed. And the people, many of whom were already religious, decided to just have secret religious services and things like that, right? So it's hard to eliminate this belief or, or system of beliefs that people already had. Um, 
that's, uh, that's not a problem that you have to think about. So you don't have to think about how are you going to eliminate religion. You can just decide that <coughs> there isn't any and then your education system and your culture and everything will, will reinforce this aspect of, of no religion. Does that kind of make sense? Okay. Made sense to a couple of you. So that's good enough. Laws, crime, and punishment. Um, these need to work toward your goals. Right? They should reflect your values and they should work towards the solving of the problems that you set out. Um, so, uh, mm, students tend to be maybe most creative on this part, so I won't say anything more about it other than just remember for all of these, you need to be able to explain how they help you achieve your goals. Uh, technology, um, what do citizens have? Do citizens have access to, you know, everyone has a cell phone, a computer, everyone has the internet, or no one does, or everyone has those things with limited access to things? Does everyone have a television, a radio? Does no one have those things? Those are, um, those are all things that, depending on what your goals as a society are, you may decide that less technology could help make people happier. Or less technology in the information um, aspect of it could help you control what people think better. And uh, this is maybe the most valuable thing. So and importantly, what technology do citizens have? What technology does government have? Maybe not the same. So you may want to create a world where the government has access to technologies that your regular citizens don't have uh, for, I don't know, surveillance or, or that sort of thing. Um, what else do I have? I have food, transportation, and education. So under food, all I'm going to say is no magic, right? No Star Trek um, food machines that you just say, tea, Earl Grey, hot, and the machine goes, Mrow, and there's a hot Earl Grey tea for you. I don't remember what that machine is called. I don't know if any of you ever watched Star Trek, but you remember what that machine is called? No, I don't remember it. Anyways, um, so you have to think about production, right? How does your food get made? And distribution. In sort of real world parameters. Now, the trick here and maybe I should have mentioned this sooner, is that in your utopia, you are deciding how large of a community it is that you're governing, right? Is it a village of 50 people? In which case your monarch might be a, an acceptable choice without having to delegate much authority. Um, is it, um, if you have a village of 50 people, then you really have to make sure that you have all of the jobs covered, right? So maybe if T-Bone is a farmer, any of T-Bone's children are also going to have to be farmers because if he retires, then um, nobody has any food anymore, right? That kind of thing. So um, 
if your utopia is the size of Canada, you've got very different problems than if your utopia is the size of this classroom or the size of Steinbach, or if it's worldwide. So you decide what, what works best for you. Transportation. Um, the size of your utopia is obviously very important for transportation as well. So in the giver, which I think we talked about, um, but in the giver, everyone gets a bicycle, right? It is part of, you know, when you turn age seven or whatever it is, you're given a bicycle. And then when you turn 12, they give you a bigger one. And that's it. All of the, they have sort of pods, like small communities within the, the larger structure. And nobody has to go very far. And the weather is always nice. So you, nobody needs, so they have other vehicles. They, they mention planes and trucks and things like that in the giver. But people don't need those for their personal use because there's nowhere for them to go that's more than a few minutes on a bike. Um, so, um, I mean, things like that. How far do people need to go and how do you want to get them there and why? Why is that important? Then the last part, education. This is maybe the most important one uh, in a number of ways. And not just because I'm a teacher, but if you want to create a better society, you need to influence the way that people think, and education is the best way to influence what people think. And so you, as the creator of this state, controls what gets taught and to whom it gets taught. Um, and that can have a really big impact on the sort of society that you build in terms of uh, culture and values. So, any questions about this? Anybody think of a tenth category that we should add on just to make it an even number? Thanks for at least snickering at that, Megzi. I needed some kind of reaction to make sure that some of you are alive. Um, Rico, you're alive? All right. Um, so what you're going to be working towards in this, and this is maybe an important thing for you to consider now, is you're going to be making a recruiting presentation. So you're going to have to, you're going to try to create a place where your classmates are going to want to live. And so once you have established these nine areas, then you're going to create a presentation. That'll be next week's assignment that is going to recruit your classmates to come and live in your new perfect world, perfect community. So parts of, um, parts of what you write in here, you might want to leave out in your presentation. Right, so in your presentation, if, so if you are withholding information from your citizens, or you're, you know, brainwashing them in some way, then you don't you're not going to tell them that up front. You're going to stress the, stress the positive outcomes of your society. Any questions? All right, give it a whirl. Let's see where you go. Um, it sh I should say, if you haven't finished your uh, goals yet, then you need to do that first. I, I looked over yours this morning, um, and a little more than half of you had done them. 
Uh, if you haven't done them yet, then uh, do those first before you uh, work on to this, because this won't make any sense without goals. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, 